dudes, what's happening? I'm gonna walk you through some of the artwork that I created for Burning Crusade in 2006. I was hired on at Blizzard to pick up where a lot of the original Vanilla WoW team left off and we were a team of 40 people and I was the only dedicated concept artist on World of Warcraft at the time. To clarify, everybody on the art team of Warcraft did concept art for different parts at that time as well. But I was the only guy that had the concept artist, senior concept artist title on my, on my, my badge. So I had to do a lot of artwork. But I wanna show you a lot of the pieces that I did. This is not portfolio formatted or anything fancy. This is me going through the raw files, the, the JPEGs that I have. This is a little slice of Blizzard history and they own all this artwork, by the way. But it's, it's such old stuff, I don't even think anybody would care about this. Uh, I don't even know that people will believe this is the real concept art anymore because concept art has grown so much and I've grown so much this almost doesn't even look like my artwork anymore. But let's dig into it. Let's look at some Burning Crusade concept art. This is year one at Blizzard for me. So it's 2006. I had been rejected from Blizzard for years. I had four rejection postcards. And when I finally shipped a, a game at Capcom, Blizzard was like, yeah, okay, so you might be a good fit. Uh, so day one, I hung up my rejection postcards over my desk. Uh, that was a reminder to never never give up on something that you really want to do. And I really wanted to be at Blizzard all those years. And the first task that I got assigned was to redesign the Black Temple. And this was the see, these were the very earliest sketches. And I was very shape heavy back then. Everything I did had these really dynamic shapes. I think I got hired just because of my sort of shape language vocabulary, what I could create in silhouettes mostly. My rendering skills were pretty poor actually. And in fact, I was very intimidated. There was uh, several other artists uh, that Peter Lee was a, uh, he was a concept artist in the creative development department and he was doing these incredible paintings. Uh, Wang Wei was still working in China, but he was doing a lot of uh, these really incredibly highly rendered like box art type of level of stuff. But that stuff isn't really what they use in production as much as uh, these really quick sketches. I was expected to do about five to 10 different designs a day. So what you're gonna see is mostly all sketches. This was the first, it's called the Old Drenai Temple because originally this wasn't assigned to be the Black Temple. Uh, the art director saw it and went, hey, you know what? That's that's going to be kind of like a good groundwork for uh, we need a black temple. And this was going to be where it, you would fight Illidan. And and then I got a, after I had done this sketch and then they assigned that to me, then I got all of the information on what the black temple was supposed to look like. So I went ahead and, and took a lot of the shapes that I had worked out from that and put together this image. As I said, there were a lot of illustrations coming from the creative dev side and I felt this kind of intimidation, like I have to render at that level uh, for concept art, which isn't necessarily true, but uh, at the time, you know, there was only, there weren't that many concept artists working in the video game industry. So there wasn't like a roadmap for this. You gotta remember this is before Facebook, before ArtStation, uh, conceptart.org was mostly a place where people were practicing photorealistic paintings. Um, and so it wasn't, there wasn't really a roadmap for what a concept artist should be or what we should be doing, what we should be reaching for to achieve in game development. I mean, it was a new role. Before that, most 3D modelers would do their own little sketches and doodles and design their, their characters. There wasn't like a role for a concept artist in games. As games became more highly detailed, it was required that somebody kind of take that role to have a consistent, cohesive shape language across a culture kit, for example, and to unify the vision of the of the of all of the the concepts that are being made. Nowadays, most AAA game development teams would have a team of a few different concept artists. At Blizzard, if you're a 3D modeler on like a, a props team for War, uh, World of Warcraft, you can still do a lot of concept art if you're inclined to do so. Well, that's how it was back then anyway. I don't know how it is anymore. That was 10 years ago or well, 12 years ago now. Next up was the Exodar. And this was really kind of the starting zone. We had this Naru crashed ship and I didn't even know what the heck a Naru was. I don't think anybody knew. I, <laughs> there were these 
energy-like ethereal shapes that just floated and they sort of imbued the Draenei with some knowledge about uh, star charts and space navigation. So that was really, for the most part, the only information that I had. So a lot of the shape language that you see for the Naru actually derived from some of my earliest sketches where I was just doing these kind of shapes that were organic, but then they had a kind of a symmetry to them. These early sketches of the Naru would then go on to inspire, of course, Tempest Keep, as well as the Exodar interior, which you can see a lot of the sketches here. I just knew that I wanted these bright neon blown out lights. Everything in the industry at the time was going like this Grand Theft Auto realistic. There was a big movement of desaturation. Uh, Gears of War was basically a gray game. And I wanted to counter that. We're World of Freaking Warcraft. Let's go blow out the color, blow out the saturation. But I went too far, like Icarus, man. Like a kid discovering dodge and burn and <laughs> just a little too early. I had all this power, but I didn't know how to control it, you know? Those who pay close attention will notice that the Naru inspired a lot of the Draenei architecture and shape language. And the reason for that is that the Naru had inspired the Draenei to reach for the stars. So they gave them all these star charts. The Draenei became obsessed with space travel. And that's why a lot of their architecture actually uh, has those shapes worked into them, as well as the shapes and the angles that you see in their horns and in their, some of their, uh, their armor designs. When defining the symbol for the Draenei, which you can see at the far bottom left, this was actually, these were some of the explorations that failed because some of the earliest explorations involved some of these almost carapace uh, sea life creatures as a framework. I really pushed for what I guess would be considered sort of a harebrained idea. And sometimes you just got to do that with concept art is like, try something unreasonable and weird. For example, all of their structures being constructed out of these carapace type of shapes, but it, I guess it just didn't fit with the language of who the characters were. If you're adding in just way too many elements, your idea becomes diluted. Uh, these were some explorations of various like braziers and uh, I think some of them ended up becoming totems. Uh, really good for really defining what the Draenei architecture would look like. Uh, in this case, some of, this, some of these structures at the bottom were where the orcs had taken over some Draenei structures. And what would that look like? You know, meanwhile, you've also got all these like Naru crystals uh, kind of spread out across the landscape. It was, what was kind of, it was a bit of a cheese, you know? Uh, I admit it, uh, during the WoW days, you could just have a crystal under a, a floating platform and say, oh no, it's magically transported through the air. Or this forest is corrupted. Well, what's it corrupted with? I don't know, crystals, like blood crystals. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of liberties that were taken with the sort of fantasy of, of how a crystal could become the magical solution that makes your design suddenly make more sense. But in a way, that was what was really key for me as a game developer and a concept artist to go through that phase where here I get to think completely un, uh, unrestricted about how something can just look cool and think of a solution for how it makes sense later. But as I developed as a conceptual designer, I began to realize that those limitations of function are not a limitation. They're actually your solution. Your story is your solution for how something should look. It's not a problem to figure out later. Oh, I loved this one. This was an opportunity to do the Bur Burning Legion prop kit. And this is sort of an example of like a culture kit. I ended up specializing a lot in this at Blizzard where it's like, here's the cooking utensils, the forges, the weapon racks, the huts. Here's how they lived. The story that goes into this culture kit. This is uh, Lady Vash, uh, which I think was called Serpent Shrine Cavern is what it ended up being called in the final. Here are a couple more of those uh, orcified, um, <laughs> orcified Draenei structures. These were defensive towers outside of the uh, Burning Gates. And this was uh, the Manatar, I believe he's called. And I don't know if he had been designed before, but that whole thing where the blades are attached to the tusks, that was me. I did that. That was years ago. <laughs> And that brings us into Shatrath City, which was uh, one of the kind of the primary hub in Burning Crusade in Outland. And this was a, an interesting one because it was sort of the culmination of all the explorations that I had done for the, the, the shape language for the Draenei. Uh, I worked with a guy named Kevin Griffith on this one. And basically, like, it was just the two of us. We pretty much, we built the whole city ourselves and, and 
uh, there was, I mean, of course we had the help of the props team and the design team had laid out this, the room and, or the space and all that. And, uh, but it was really just kind of up to us to fill in the blanks of, oh, this is the Arakoa quarter. And like, this is the mage quarter and things like that. And really to find the, the different areas of it. I was able to save back then. Um, I was able to save out a lot of my images as GIFs, which were really just, you know, slowly turning on each layer. And this one was actually featured on the uh, behind the scenes DVD, but I've slowed it down just a little bit more for you here. So you can really see like how those layers come together. And here we have the Arakoa uh, village in uh, time-lapse as well. In a sense, this was one of the, the first uh, uh, speed paint images captures that I had done. This is pre-YouTube. I, I, in hindsight, man, I wish I would have started doing those earlier, actually releasing them. Video capture software at the time was really difficult to work with. The file sizes were enormous and it was difficult to export or even compress. Nowadays, we have tools like Camtasia and whatnot that allow you to, to speed up the, the process and make it a lot more shiny. Got a few more pieces here. Uh, this was kind of an underground tunnel uh, uh, doorway. I think it was for Lady Vosh. And of course, uh, you all recognize uh, Zangar mushrooms, obviously. As well as doing a lot of the concept art for Burning Crusade, I also contributed a ton of icons. So every day at the end of the day, I'd probably sit down and jam out about three to five icons. It was just sort of tacked on to you know, the rest of my other responsibilities, but I was just kind of matching the style that Samwise had set forth with a lot of the original WoW icons. And nowadays I'm sure that a lot of these have been replaced. I did several sheets full of these and later this, this knowledge and experience would come in handy because I, I had a lot to do with, um, uh, some icon development on another big project that I'll, I'll cover in a future video for a different company. Icons are great for practicing your composition because technically all of your images should read well at a thumbnail size anyway. And so if you're doing these, they're like little paintings, little practice paintings. And I got to be a better painter after doing these. You really get to work on materials and such. So that really kind of wraps up a lot of, it's not everything that I did for Burning Crusade. It covers a lot of it. I could probably do a 30 or 40 minute video just about Burning Crusade, but I've condensed this down and sped things along just so that you can kind of get a little insight into what it was like for me as a developer on the Burning Crusade team. It was an interesting time in my life. I learned a lot and it was an amazing, amazing, time to be at Blizzard Entertainment when World of Warcraft had just passed, I think, 10 million subscribers. It was an incredible time. There was a lot of pressure, but it all turned out okay, I think. Can still go back and play that game. Anyway, so there you have it. That's uh, that's my, my Burning Crusade years. If you like my artwork and you would like to nab my brushes or pick up some uh, uh, tutorials, I have a box set of tutorials and I also have an art book over on my Gumroad channel. You can swing on over there and pick those up. Certainly appreciate it. I'm also going to be doing a video like this for Wrath of the Lich King, uh, Diablo 3, and uh, League of Legends. Can't really talk about my contract stuff that I'm doing right now, but I got more Twilight Monk coming up for you too. All right, dudes, that does it for me. And uh, remember, if you're gonna do concept art for World of Warcraft, The Burning Crusade, <sighs> do some concept art for World of Warcraft, Burning Crusade with some freaking passion, man, yeah.